uh, are people okay with me taking my mask off? Because want to be, okay? Just, you know, want to make sure uh, consent and everything. It's <laughs> a big thing. Okay, uh, please be seated. Oh, that feels good. Um, <laughs> I just, can I just take a moment to appreciate this? This has been my dream since sixth grade to... <laughs> <laughs> to stand up here to talk about what I've learned, to pontificate in front of a captive audience. It's been my dream for a long time. Every time I've come to church and seen the preachers up here, I've always said to myself, that'll be me someday. A couple of you may know that I have preached on a few occasions before this, even earlier this year during Advent, but in those moments, I was part of a group, and my ego is big enough to enjoy being on a stage by myself, uh, <laughs> though I have begrudgingly agreed to share it with Gabriel today, but as you can see, uh, they have decided to join us in an electronic form. Um, yay, COVID. Um, <laughs> nevertheless, Someday, I always promise myself, someday it'll be me. Now that I'm up here, I feel a little at a loss as to what to speak about. I've spent so long fantasizing about this that, of course, the moment I require my astounding intellect, it decides to vacation to Tahiti. <laughs> So I fell back on my longtime friends for help. Not real people. You guys are too complicated to help me, full of these societal expectations that I can never, nor have any great desire to understand. Um, I'm talking about literary characters, the comforting embrace of those personalities that never change from the first time you pick up the book to the last time you ever read it. Specifically, I went to what I would call my favorite story of all time, the play Cyrano de Bergerac by Edmond Rostand. For those of you who've never heard of it, I highly recommend either reading it, not in the original French, um, maybe in an English translation if you want, or going and seeing the recent movie starring Peter Dinklage, which is amazing. Um, in short, the story revolves around two men, an ugly genius, Cyrano, and a beautiful idiot, Christian, and their competing love for the same woman, Roxanne. Now, don't write it off just yet. I swear it's a lot more complicated than some trashy romance plot arc like Romeo and Juliet. <laughs> the main character, Cyrano, suffers from the fatal flaw of an enormous nose that renders him unfortunately hideous. Throughout the play, he is constantly mocked for his nose and spends his life compensating for it by becoming an expert swordsman, poet, orator. He wields his words like he wields his sword with great precision and accuracy. But throughout it all, despite all his success, he never loses that insecurity about his nose. On his deathbed, he hallucinates fighting his longtime enemies, lies, stupidity, prejudice, and betrayal. He concedes that they, in the end, have stripped him of his fame and pride. But when he faces God, the one thing he will take with him, the one thing they cannot take from him, is his panache. Now, what does that word mean? Panache. Panache archaically means the plume of feathers found on old military helmets. You know, the one in all those uh, comedy movies that always flop in the person's face, you know, so, and then they always have to blow it up. Um, but in the play, it takes on the symbolism of Cyrano's flamboyant defiance of authority and reckless courage in face of his foes. It is, at his core, what makes him him. And this is my incredibly convoluted way of trying to get to the point I'm trying to make in this sermon, finding your panache. Now, I'm 18 years old. I'm practically ancient. <laughs> so I've been around long enough, I feel that I've figured out a bit about my panache. I know my vices, I could write miles on my faults. I'm up here saying I can be blunt, rude, and uncaring. 
Can you see I have a list here? I can be impatient, judgmental, have a, as already established, massive ego. I can say or do things that seem, as my oldest friend put in my yearbook the other day, outrageous. Well, thanks for that. For example, a few months ago there was a car crash in front of my school. I believe nobody was hurt, that's what I've heard. Um, and as my parental unit, or more commonly known, my mother, was dropping me off, I commented, oh no, I hope it's not anyone I like. <laughs> she was not as amused as you seem to be. <laughs> my mother's immediate reaction was, you cannot say something like that. Now, I might have been a little clueless here, but I asked, why not? And her, again, instantaneous response was, people don't say things like that. Now, here I thought, this is my 18 years of experience coming into play, I know the answer to this, everyone thinks it. Except my mother's been around a lot longer than I have, and I mean a lot longer. Oh, oh, she's gonna see this, isn't she? Oops. Scratch the record. Um, and so she said, destroying all my arguments in one fell swoop, yeah, but nobody says it. And that's what got me about that interaction. I'd yet again failed to understand these social norms, let my mouth run ahead of me, felt the censure of society. I lacked the empathy that was so often touted because to me, it seemed unnecessary to have compassion for someone I likely had never met, nor would likely ever know. This is a fault I battle against, sometimes harder than others. <laughs> the constant work to try and understand others, to be conscientious of my social environment, and also to not always say the first thing that comes into my head. However, despite this less than stellar example, I do love the word my friend gave me. Outrageous. It's my word, my panache. I may have my faults, and I would not be me if I did not have them. But I would also not be me if I hadn't shaved one side of my head or refused to bow to the societal pressures against me as a woman who wants to study and work in STEM. It's a give and take in life. Perfection is unachievable, and as a perfectionist, that really frustrates me. But I've learned it's not worth searching for that perfection. What you need to find is what makes you, you. It is this that I try to base my life on. My panache is my disregard for the constraints of social norms, to say what I truly believe, to stand in the face of every insecurity I ever have and say that when I die, the one thing they cannot take from me is my outrageousness, my panache. So I propose to you Find your panache, whether it be a quiet strength or extravagant eccentricity. Realize that you are you. And even in the face of everything, the one thing life cannot take from you is who you are inside. Recognize that your faults are but one part of a much grander picture of a decent human being. One not defined by your worst mistake, but by your you -ness. You can hate the way you look, dislike your blunt nature, misunderstand every social cue in your life. But if you take pride in yourself, not only accept, but rejoice in who you are, you're kind of set. If we stop being so ashamed of ourselves, not give in to our follies and faults, but fight them to the bitter end, even if they strip us of everything, they cannot take our panache. Cyrano died holding on to the one thing that made him himself. My goal in life, whether I die tomorrow or 70 years from now, isn't to have lived a perfect life or to have loved every single thing about myself, is to have lived well enough that when I die, even if I lose it all, I still have my panache. If there's anything I'd like you to take from this sermon, even if you forget it in five minutes or tuned out from the beginning, is that doing some genuine soul searching to figure out what makes you you 
despite everything you have done wrong, every fault you may have, real or imagined, or what anyone may have told you, it can give you something to hold on to, something to remind you that at the end of the day, you're a good person. And isn't that what we all need in our lives? So here's me saying, as a totally knowledgeable 18-year-old who has nothing left to learn, <laughs> I'm blunt, I'm bad in social situations, I kind of lack empathy, but I'm outrageous. I have my panache. Do you have yours? <laughs>